Hi guys, it's Stacy from Cambridge Springs Public Library. Um, I've been doing some story time videos and so I thought maybe the adults would like a craft. Um, and I tried to figure out a craft that would be something that could be in all of our homes. Um, so we're not running to the craft store. We're uh, staying at home and staying safe and staying healthy. And so, um, and who doesn't need a little bit of bright color right now? So I thought, oh, we would try and make this uh, pinwheel wreath. So it's paper pinwheels. Um, I have some buttons in there in the center. Those are optional. And they're on a, um, a cardboard circle that I cut out of a shipping box and kind of taped together the cardboard and uh, cut it in a circle. And, um, and I covered it in ribbon. And uh, so what we would try and make that to Kind of brighten our outlook for uh, for times such as these. As these. Um, so, if you can see my supplies here, um, 18 to 24 inch squares of paper, glue. Um, I used hot glue because it's what I had. Um, you can use white glue. You might want to include clothes pins if you're using white glue. Uh, a wreath form. If you have a wreath and you are gonna just don't like it anymore, and you're gonna tear it apart then use that. Or an 18 inch wide circle of cardboard with a 13 and a half inch opening, which will leave you about a two inch um, space to work uh, with. And optional buttons and ribbon. So let's get started. Um, so first of all, you're gonna have to, yeah, I cut my cardboard circle and um, I only had so much yellow ribbon, so I finished up with a couple of different colors of purple. And right now we're just using what we've got. And like I said, I used hot glue, um, but use what you've got on hand. Now, um, four inch uh, squares of paper. This happens to be scrapbook paper. Um, I've made some using copy paper. If you have just copy paper or if you have old damaged books or magazines, um, you can cut those into four inch squares and use them. Um, this is gonna, not going to be a wreath for outside. This is a paper wreath, so it's either going to be on an interior door or on a door that's sandwiched in between uh, another door. Um, just be aware that both sides of your paper are going to show in this project. I'll show you. Um, see, here's one of our pinwheels. Oh, it's so hard with this camera. Here's one of the pinwheels, and the both the back and the front of the paper are going to show. Um, and they're super easy and kind of cathartic. Just sitting and uh, I was sitting and listening to an audiobook and uh, and making pinwheels for this project, and it comes together really quick and it's kind of satisfying. Um, but do be aware that both sides of your paper are going to show. So get your kids to color a bunch of paper or um, use some of their artwork or you know something. Get creative. You guys have things in your house that you can make this this up, and you're going to feel really good about it. Um, I use, because we're going to be folding this paper, I happen to have a bone folder. Um, the side of a pencil will work just as well. Um, and then you'll need a pair of scissors. So let me just move my camera down so you can see what I'm doing here. All right. I think that'll be okay. So you start with your uh, four inch square. And let me move back. Forgive me my, my fumblings here. I've not ever done this before with these cameras. Um, so here's where you come in. You want your creases to be real nice because it's going to make your end product really nice. So you're just folding it point to point, right? Point to point. And then use your bone folder or use your pencil, okay? And make your nice crease and then unfold it. So here we've got our crease and then fold it the opposite way. Point to point. Okay. Maybe I can move that camera down even a smidge more. There we go. Um, and so your paper is going to have uh, 
a line across here and across here. Okay, so I did the production mode and I folded all of mine and then I did the next step and I did the next step. So choose what you want to do. Put me on pause, fold all your paper, um, whatever makes you happy at this point, right? <laughs> so um, I'll do another one. I'm going to fold another one. Um, and again, I mean, this is scrapbook paper. It's got some sort of words on it. And um, then the other side is blank, but both sides are going to show. Um, so point to point. And point to point again so that you end up with an X um, across your paper. Okay? One more time. So that's what I've got to finish my wreath here. Point to point. And point to point again. All right. So now you want to get your scissors out. And uh, you want to cut from the point to the center, but you want to stop just short of the center, a quarter inch or, or a half inch, just shy of the center. You know what? I'm going to put a little dot in the center so maybe you can see where I'm cutting to. See, just about right there. See when I open it up? And it doesn't have to be precise. Don't get your ruler out. I mean, unless you dig that, and go ahead. Um, I got some, some people that I know that would really enjoy making this as precise as possible. This is super forgiving. See? And so you're going to do that with all of yours. This is a super forgiving uh, craft. Um, if you don't get your squares exactly four inches, there's no craft police that are going to come and talk to you. We're doing this to make your days go by a little easier, a little more enjoyable. This isn't supposed to be stressful. Okay, so we've got all of these. Now, here comes a little bit, I, I guess, here comes the most difficult part of the entire process. And it's not that hard, guys, I promise. So what you're going to do is you're going to choose any corner. And I don't have the glue on here yet. I'm going to show you how we're dry fitting it. Uh, and you're going to bend that in, okay? You're going to skip a corner. You're going to go to the next corner. Bend that into the center. Skip a corner, go to the next corner, bend it into the center. Use my fingers. Skip a corner, go to the next corner, bend it in the center. Guys, you made a pinwheel. And all you have to do is, is glue that up. Now, if you're using the white glue, and it's going to take you a little bit longer to, um, for it to dry, uh, get a clothespin, um, get your children to sit with these. Um, if you're using hot glue, it's almost instantaneous. Okay, so let's do that one more. I'll glue this one, okay? So I got my hot glue gun. I put a little dot in the center. There's one, and I skip this corner. Skip a corner. Another dot in the center. Okay. Skip a corner. Another dot of glue in the center. Skip a corner. Another dot of glue. Oh my gosh. Well, I did that incorrectly, didn't I? All right, when you're not paying attention, you'll do it incorrectly. Let's try one more time. My word, you guys. All right, put a dot in. Skip a corner. <laughs> All right, put a dot of glue in. Skip a corner. Put a dot of glue in. 
skip a corner. Put a dot of glue in. Skip a corner. And now for realty, you do have the pinwheel. Oh, glory be. I don't know what happened on that last one. All right, so now to prove to you that I really do know how to do these, despite the fact that I did screw up that one. Okay, you drive all your pinwheels in that you made. And you take your form that you have wrapped with a ribbon, um, or not, depending on what you got going on. Maybe you don't have ribbon. Maybe you have paint. Maybe you're going to paint this. Um, maybe you have markers. You're going to color it with markers. Maybe you're good with this, uh, the brown cardboard, and you're going to call it a craft brown wreath base. I don't mind. Um, so what you're going to do is you could first of all go through and try and figure out, you know, a pattern, or you can make it really organic and do whatever you want. Um, and that's how I'm going to do it. And so you just put a dot of glue here and put it right there on your wreath. And you want to try and nestle them in pretty close together so that when you get done, not a lot of your wreath is going to show the wreath form. Um, but yeah, just snuggle them right in there together. For those of you who are using uh, the white glue, um, you might have to do a few and, and leave it to dry um, so that they will get all stable and happy there before you have to move them. Um, you might be putting them in a little tighter together than, uh, than I am. And at the end, you might find that you need to make a couple of more. Um, or you run out of paper and you find out that you need to uh, put a bow on it. Guys, there's lots of things around your house that you can make crafts out of and, uh, and just brighten up your day. So, see, we're almost done with this here, guys. The biggest part is putting the pinwheels together, and um, like I said, that's pretty enjoyable. You get a cup of tea, um, you do it as a family, and uh, or you do it by yourself if you've already had quite enough family time. Thank you very much. Um, put some music on or an audio book from one of our collections, and. Uh, and you have yourself a really, really lovely springtime wreath. How about that? <laughs> oh, I miss seeing all of you, and I hope uh, I hope to see you soon. Um, I'm gonna keep trying to post some things for for you to do um, while you're in quarantine. Um, it might be another adult craft like this, um, might be some kids crafts, definitely some story times. Um, oh, on, on the first wreath I put buttons in the center of each one. Um, this one I chose not to. Uh, so you can do, mm, my first wreath just ended up on the floor over there. Uh, <laughs> you can do whatever you want to embellish this. You can include a ribbon, um, glue a little something on the back so that you can hang it up. And, um, and just enjoy yourselves, guys. Know that the library misses you guys as much as, uh, as you miss us. And hopefully we'll be back together soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.